What's up, everybody? I am at the shop, Smetting Performance, and I want to talk about rocker arms and valve train on LS combinations. And actually, these this stuff kind of applies to every engine. I just happen to be working on my personal Ricky's engine's valve train, so it's going to be an LS, obviously. But this stuff applies for every motor. And what I want to talk about is valve train stability and how you can achieve it with different combinations in a motor. So right here we have a factory LS3 rocker arm. And, well actually this rocker arm does already have a trunnion upgrade, but basically the rocker arms from GM, the body itself, it's a box design, um, it's steel, it's actually incredibly strong. Um, these really do have very little deflection in the body themselves. And they're very strong rockers. The only weak point in them is the actual trunnion that it rides on. You see if I hold it, you can. it has that pivot. That's what makes it a roller rocker. The factory trunnions, at a certain lift and spring pressure and RPM, can fail and do fail. So what you can do very affordably is put a different trunnion in it with these big circlips. And you have a very strong rocker arm. That really is good for 90% of every application out there. These will turn upwards of high, mid 7,000 RPM and really not have a problem. The only negative to these is, what they, is that they have what's called a scrub nose tip. And that tip at very high spring pressure and very high lift, well, two different things will happen. One, if we have a lot of spring pressure that we're putting on this rocker, and I'm talking 400, anything above 420, 430 pounds, what's going to happen is your valve tip right here is going to get completely cratered and destroyed from this constantly rocking on it. The other thing that happens, and at really high lift, and on an LS3 1.7 ratio, I'm talking like 650 plus, the tip starts to lose its center contact patch on the valve and it will start to side load the valve guide and can prematurely wear out your valve guide. So the next step up from this rocker are these. You can see we have an upgraded roller tip. It's still relatively the exact same design. It's got another reinforcing brace in there, but all in all, the same design. I mean, this is a really good design. All we did was we added that roller tip which gives us the ability to run a whole lot more spring pressure and not hurt the valve stem tip. And at very high lift, because it's a roller tip, we still have good contact on the valve stem and we're not side loading the guides at all. So these are what I run in Ricky, but there is still another upgrade we can do. So on the LS3 head, the rocker arms all bolt down independently, and that's totally cool. And each rocker is only held down by one bolt. However, over here, we have what's called a shaft system. And what I plan on doing is I'm going to take these aftermarket roller rockers, I'm going to press out their trunnions, and attach them together on a single shaft. That way, effectively, each rocker is helping each other with their bolts. This is a tool steel shaft. And each one of them, actually there's four per side of the motor. All of those then ride on this steel shaft that sits in the cylinder head like that. And you'll see that there's even more. There's three more bolts in the assembly that hold everything together. And what this is going to give us is a whole lot more rigidity so that at really high spring pressure, if this rocker starts to deflect, it's just completely fortified and will give us really good lift and duration and won't succumb to the spring pressure, basically. Long story short, stronger is better in valve train. The more we can reduce flex and increase strength and rigidity, the better it is for everything. Not only are we keeping more lift in the cam instead of losing it to the rocker arm flexing, but it's also better on the valves if they have a stable rocker arm controlling them up and down as the motor approaches really high RPM. In my case, I will probably be shifting at about 7,600 RPM. And then at the mile, 
I'm going to stay above 7,000 RPM for about 10 seconds in fifth gear. So, I'm going to take all these rocker arms, I'm going to pop out their trunnions, and then we'll start pressing them on to the new shaft system. The sir clips are popped out of the rockers. Now I can press the trunnion out of their bodies. As you can see here, here's the empty body rocker shell. And this is now ready for the new bearings. All of the rocker arms are now just bare bodies and I have the new bearings ready to go. I'm gonna press the bearings into the bodies and then we can assemble them on the shafts. After this step though, you need to be very careful not to drop or lose any of those needles. They can fall out now. all have their needle bearing new trunnions popped into them looking really nice next you can kind of see now how these are going to go on there they've got these new circlips two of them go in the middle and then two more hold the rockers in place I'm going to do the insides of all of them all the little shafts slide the rocker arms on.
Okay. That requires some serious patience to get all the inners lined up, but they're all done. Now it's as simple as taking the rocker and they just slide right on very nicely. These are LS3 rockers. You can see that the intake is offset. You don't want to put those on backwards. That would suck. Okay, the outside circlips way easier to put on, but there's the finished assembly. You can now see that both of these bolt holes, actually all five of them, are helping hold this rocker arm system totally stable and in line. There's gonna be no deflection. And again, this will all go together on this steel support shaft. Super cool. Now you can see how everything is held by a shaft together. Just making this system incredibly strong and rigid. I mean, it's difficult to even pop, there it goes, to even pop the assembly off of the steel support. So it's a small thing, but it can make a huge difference in the engine staying together when you're pushing the limits of your valve train. Just to put the numbers out there for the tech people, for the nerds, I'm running 505 pounds of open pressure and 165 on the seat. This motor is going to the mile where it will see a red line of about 76, 7700 RPM, but it's going to stay there. The, the mile pass, all in all, is about 28 seconds for my car to go from zero to 185. So with the new combo, my goal and the number I'm going to reach is the big two double O. And so that could be a 25 second pass. I don't really know, but I want everything in tip top shape so that when I throw it in fifth gear and start to lay on the RPM, I can have confidence in the motor that everything's gonna survive and handle it. Oh, I'm also running 680 thou intake lift and 663 exhaust lift. So I want everything as sturdy and rigid as possible while these guys are bouncing up and down at 7,500 RPM, just sitting there in fifth gear. What? It's gonna be sick. Again, that race is in a few weekends away still. I've got to put the motor back together. The new cam's already in it, but the cylinder heads are off of it. So I gotta put the heads back on. Lifters are gonna be here. Actually, the day y'all see this video, I will be assembling the motor again because the lifters get delivered midday when this video goes live. And the transmission should also be back in the car, fingers crossed, while you are watching this video. And uh, we can go straight to the chassis diner then and print that 600 horsepower rear wheel naturally aspirated LS power. It's gonna be sick. I'll see y'all then.